Welcome to Super at 60, welcome to my home, and welcome to my kitchen. Yes, today we are going to make chicken vesuvio. Have you ever heard of that? It is a fantastic dish with, of course, chicken and stock and potatoes and onions and tomato paste. There is so much flavor packed into this one dish. You'll absolutely love it, and I'm sure your family will too. And to go along with it, I thought, you know what? I just may throw in some no yeast dinner rolls. They're so delicious and oh my goodness, they are so easy. It's just one of those quick things, you know, when you're thinking at the end of a, a cooking day in the kitchen, you're thinking maybe, oh, I just feel like I need one more thing. I feel like I just need to serve one more thing on the table. What could it be? Well, probably rolls. Don't bring out those frozen rolls. Don't do that. Or those packaged up rolls from the store. Don't do that. Resist. Make your own no yeast dinner rolls, and I'm going to show you how today. And today's video is in collaboration with Gabrielle. Yes, Gabrielle over at Honestly Home. What a beautiful little channel over there, a big channel. And uh, I would love for you to go over and visit Gabrielle. I will link her little link right up here. Actually, her picture I'll leave up here, and I'll put her link down below like I always do for all of our collaborate collaborations. Remember, keep this in mind. Again, I pick my collaborators very, very carefully just for one reason, and that reason is you guys, just for you. So join me today in my kitchen. Let's get going. All right, I think I'm gonna go ahead and begin with our no yeast uh, dinner rolls so they can be in the oven while I'm at stove top. Uh, the chicken festivio st starts at the, on top of the stove, um, and then it goes into the oven for a bit. So, um, yeah, I think while it's taking up oven space, I won't be able to make the muffins anyway, so I'll start them first. Anyway, it's going to start with one cup of self-rising flour. Okay, if you have self-rising flour and you're not quite sure how fresh it is, um, just add one half teaspoon of uh, baking powder to it and it should rise just beautifully. And while I was getting things ready, the doorbell rang and my good friend Janet showed up with these. Look at them. Aren't they just gorgeous? I love hydrangea. And this happens to be one of my favorite colors. And I just think it's one of the most beautiful. I have a bush, a hydrangea bush in my backyard. And I love it. I love it. I can just smell on it all day long. It is so beautiful here in Virginia today. Almost 70 degrees, sunny and beautiful. And uh, I'm grateful today. I am grateful for friendship and I am grateful for you, Janet. And thank you so much. Have a good day. All right, so here is my one cup of self-rising flour. And here is one half teaspoon, because I'm not sure exactly about my uh, the rising strength of my self-rising flour. So I am gonna go ahead and add that little bit extra um, powder. And I'm gonna need uh, a half a cup of milk. Let me go ahead and add that. Half cup milk. These are so, so super, super easy to put together. One teaspoon of sugar. And two tablespoons of mayonnaise. Yeah, so I'll just try and get that out of there. Use your favorite kind, doesn't matter. This recipe is just so simple about one tablespoon and that's almost, yeah, I'd say that's about two tablespoons, right? That, that looks like about two tablespoons. All right, so let's go ahead and give it a mix. You know what? I decided I was also sinking ahead and I gave it just a tiny, tiny pinch of salt just to make sure. I like them kind of salty. And I'm also going to add um, some Parmesan cheese. You know what? If you want to make these sweet, you can add a little bit of extra sugar when you put your sugar in, maybe two teaspoons, and uh, a little bit of cinnamon, maybe some raisins or dried cranberries. I don't know, whatever you like, it'll be just fine. All right, let me get this mixed. 
Well, I'm busy making a mess again. It should feel, like I said, about, um, about six cups. But um, if you find that one was uh, a little fuller than the other, just, you know, have a little fun and play, play the little evening out game where you rob a little from one and put it into the other. All right, good. That looks just fine. I think they should be just fine. All right. Oh, I got a little bit left on the bottom here. I don't want to leave that behind. All right. Who needs it? Who needs it? Oops. I think you do. I'll put you right in there. All right. I'm going to put this in a 350 oven, uh, 12 to 15 minutes, but my oven does run a little hot. So I'm going to put it in my oven. I'm going to start it at nine minutes and then I'll check them. Okay, in the pot, I have about two tablespoons of olive oil and about a tablespoon of some of that great uh, bacon grease that I have left over. Um, I'm, I'm down to just about a couple uh, tablespoons left, so I'm using it sparingly. I'm going to go ahead and get my chicken browned. It's already been um, seasoned with salt and pepper on both sides. And it's also been uh, cleaned. You know, I took off all the skin that I didn't think needed to be on there. That's just a little bit on there. Just enough. We're just gonna put it down and let it go for a little bit. And let it brown. You see it's getting nice and brown, toasty brown. All right. Now it's gotten a little quieter. I feel like I can talk again. Yeah, it's quite loud when you brown uh, both sides of your chicken. So, all right. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and put in some uh, nice fresh chopped onion. Just don't tell my husband I'm doing this. He won't even know. <laughs> all right, and in here, I'm also going to put in five teaspoons of minced garlic. Yeah, lots of garlic goes in here. So if you're a garlic lover, oh, you're going to love this dish. All right, here comes the sizzle again. Oh, smells so good. All right, we also need uh, some tomato paste. So go ahead and put your tomato paste right in. Of course, I always leave you uh, the directions, the ingredients um, always below, so you'll know exactly how you can make this for yourselves and for your family, because you're gonna want to, it is that good. All right, and just get that rolling around in there a little bit. I love tomato paste. Um, of course, it comes in those itty bitty tiny uh, cans, or you can buy it in like the the tube form, kind of like toothpaste form, which I think is pretty nice. It's a little more more pricey that way, but um, I always when I know that I'm going to be opening up one of those little tiny cans of tomato paste, I make sure that I'm going to use it in another tomato based dish that week before it goes bad. Um, sometimes even I'll stick it into my pizza sauce. And that's just fine. Look at the color of that. It's really, really just beautiful. Oh, and you know, just that little bit of bacon grease while that chicken was browning. Mm -mm -mm. Smelled like you walked into the finest restaurant in town. There's something about that flavor. Oh, we all love it. We all love it. All right, so now let's go ahead. I'm gonna put in two cups of chicken broth and because I have it and because it's also um, very, you know, it, it, you'll find this particular uh, ingredient in lots of chicken vesadillo dishes and it is white wine and I'm going to put just a little bit in that's maybe three quarters of a cup. Yeah, and when that steams up inside the oven when this goes in here and all the wine steams together 
and all this beautiful chicken stock and all the flavors of the onion and the garlic and all that stuff. It is, it is so, so delicious. It's really a very, very flavorful uh, dish, something you could serve to your finest, finest company. All right, I'm gonna bring this to a boil right now. So I'm put the top back on, <clears throat> excuse me. And, uh, you know, actually I'm gonna go ahead and put in my herbs first. Right here I have some thyme, some oregano, and some parsley. So we're gonna flavor up that stock. Yeah, and I put a little bit, I'm gonna put a little bit more um, salt and pepper in there. There was, the, the um, chicken was already well salted and peppered. Um, before I even put it into brown. So it's good to go. And that's it. So now, stir all that in there. Doesn't it just look like a fantastic Italian dish? Mm -mm. Oh boy, I just caught a whiff of the tomato paste and that white wine. Oh, you're missing out. You're missing out if you're not using just a little bit of white wine. All right, let me go ahead and put the top on bring it up to a boil and I'll be right back. All right, look at that bubbling away. It's absolutely beautiful. I have some Yukon gold potatoes all cut up. I'm going to put those right in just like that. And now I'm going to put our chicken back in the pot. Oh my, I can't wait for dinner. I know my husband is so excited. He loves this dish. If you had to use, if you have a bigger family or you have a bigger group, you could probably fit another one, another piece of chicken in here. Um, yeah, let's we'll see why not. All right, and there goes the rest of the juices off the plate. All right, I'm gonna cover it up just like that. And now I'm gonna stick it into the oven um, on 375, and I'm gonna cook it in there for about, with the lid on for 25 to 30 minutes. Then I'm gonna pull it out, and I'm gonna show you one more ingredient we're gonna add. All right, we are just about done. It's been about 25, 30 minutes. It smells so good in here. Uh-huh, and this is heavy, okay? This is a very, very heavy pot. So I'm gonna be really careful. And you too, if you do this at home. Okay, watch out for the steam because uh, the steam is really hot too when, when you first open that. Oh, look at that. I gotta give you guys a look. <laughs> Let me just lift this up and show you. Look how delicious. Oh, if you could just smell it. Look at that tomato, tomato paste in there. Oh my gracious. My, my goodness. Oh my goodness. All right, the last thing I'm putting in, I have a cup and a half of frozen peas. And they're going right in the pool. And I'm gonna just give them a good, um, stir here so they get nice and um, in the sauce and cooked up for us and that is the last part of it I'm gonna leave the lid off and I'm just gonna push it back a little bit Oh, that chicken let me check the chicken oh yeah it's perfect it, it just perfectly done mm -mm, chicken vesavio back in it goes for about five minutes, long enough to cook those peas. Well, here we have it. That delicious chicken vesivio. Oh my goodness. If you miss this recipe, you have missed something so incredibly special to serve to your family or for your finest guests that come over to your house, which are very often is our family. Look at that, those beautiful bright peas against the tender, delicious chicken and those Yukon yellow 
ah, oh, potatoes are just like butter and that sauce. Oh yeah, you definitely have to have some kind of rolls or bread to sop up that sauce because it is so good. But I will tell you, as good as it looks, it tastes even better. <clears throat> It is a little hot to taste right now. It just came out of the oven, so I'm gonna put it right down over here. Um, but look at these sweet little rolls. Look at them, look how sweet they came out. They're so nice and brown on the bottom. Guys, you don't need to go through a yeast bread. You don't have to go through all that time. You don't. These muffins are absolutely delicious to serve at any time, any place. And yes, if you want to sweeten them up a little bit, make them for breakfast or whatever, chop up a small piece of apple and put them in there with some raisins and some cinnamon and up that sugar level a little bit, just a little bit. And you'll have a fine biscuit, a mighty fine biscuit. Yes. Okay. So I pulled off just a little bit of that chicken because I wanted to taste it. I mean, I've been in the kitchen all day today <laughs> for many reasons, not just this, but many reasons. Oh my gracious. Mmm. The flavor is so intense. It really is. It's really quite, quite good. Oh, this gets a five star all the way. Oh, I can't wait for Lou to have it tonight. I know he's been smelling it all afternoon. <laughs> Watch me prep it and all that stuff. It's good. It is so, so delicious. And this little roll, I have just been gnawing away on this poor little guy. <laughs> the past 30 minutes. He's just so good. Look how light and fluffy they are in the middle. Just beautiful. Just beautiful. You will not be sorry if you make the rolls. And remember, those are no yeast rolls, no yeast dinner rolls. And that delicious, delicious chicken vesuvio. It is spectacular, guys. Spectacular. Well, I want to thank you once again for joining me today here in my kitchen. I had a great day. Just a great day. I've been wanting to make this chicken vesuvio for you. You know, it's just even fun to say. Just say it. Chicken vesuvio. What's for dinner tonight, mom? Chicken vesuvio. Oh, they'll be so impressed. It's most impressive. <laughs> just the name alone. But wait till they taste and see the dish. Yeah, it's quite spectacular. But thank you for coming. And those of you who are coming over from Honestly Home and from Gabrielle's channel, thank you so much for being here. If you like the content today and this recipe, there are plenty more here at Super at 60. If you'll press that like button for me and please press that subscribe button and become part of the community here at Super at 60. We have such a good time and uh, press that little bell so you know when all my notifications do come out and they do come out an awful lot, all the time in fact, at least two a week and sometimes an extra bonus here and there. And to my subscribers, if you'll just go check, uh, just check below and you'll find Gabrielle's link at Honestly Home. And you can just get yourself right on over there and watch the coordinating video that goes with this one today. So to all of you, again, I say thank you. I say bye now and Lord bless.